Hey, what is going on everyone? This is Tanner151 here, and this is my Halo 4 review. I will be going over the good and bad of the campaign, without spoiling it, the Spartan Ops, and the multiplayer, which is War Games. Now, Halo 4 is made by 343 Industries, who are under Microsoft. Microsoft's the publisher, they are the developer. They took over the reins of the Halo franchise from Bungie. And I was worried. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm a huge Halo fan, and I was worried about the transition. I mean, yes, they had some Bungie employees like Frank O'Connor on their team, but not very many. I was like, whoa, will Halo be drastically different? Will it Will it not feel like Halo? Will it, will it be terrible? These were worries of mine. And I got to say, none of them were... None of my worries came true, if that makes sense. This game is really good it's enjoyable it's fun i think it was worth it this is the first game that i got the limited edition of anything and i love it i'm gonna get three map packs for free it's all i'm i'm happy this is all great now the campaign starts four years and like seven months after halo 3 if you played on the legendary ending you saw that they were hovering over a forerunner planet which is requiem it's a shield world the game starts off great it has good fast paced action the covenant are back um they're not the covenant that we used to know they are a uh, i think they're called the storm covenant the servants of abiding truth they're a religious faction that used to be part of the old covenant then once the old covenant was destroyed with prophet of truth dying they want to form a new covenant under the sole leadership of elites now that's actually not really stated that much in the campaign I mean, you kind of get the general idea that this isn't the old covenant, but you would have to go look at it on like Halo Wikia or something. Anyway, the campaign is good, and I felt bad for Chief because for the first like two hours, he's just getting beat up. Like, con or well, not first two hours, for like the first 15, 20 minutes of Mission One and part of Mission Two, he's just getting beat up. He's getting flown, flung everywhere. I'm like, man, this guy never gets a break. Anyway, the cutscenes in the campaign the voice acting just the acting in general was spot on i thought it was great especially the lip sync the lip sync was really good and the relationship between chief and cortana are deeper than ever it's not just like she's your helper he's the fighter no it's almost like they're they're bonded together and they are because if one dies like if chief dies and cortana is well she can't really do much because she was made to help him and it the game uh, sorry the campaign does it flows so smoothly it is I, I really enjoyed the campaign I had a lot of fun there were some glitches like here's a glitch that I remember quite clearly when you're in a scorpion tank and you're going forward and like say you hit a grunt instead of running the grunt over the grunt would just be stuck on your scorpion tank and he would shoot your scorpion tank so you would have to back up then shoot him I did find about that. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. You don't actually get to run them over. Now, I don't know if that's a glitch or just they changed some kind of motion with the tank. I'm not sure, but I did notice that, and that was kind of weird. But the game is very smooth. There aren't any uh, problems that I've noticed campaign-wise. There aren't any pop-ins, texture, texture issues. It's all clean smooth the graphics are beautiful oh and the music i have to say this about the music you can definitely tell that the music is not done by the guy that did the first five halo games you have the trilogy odst and reach but the asian guy he's a japanese guy i can't remember his name it's it's japanese he did an amazing job it's more electronic sounding it doesn't sound as uh choiry if that makes sense but it is still very good. And it's relaxing almost. It sounds really relaxing and epic. It's like you're in this epic universe. Now, I did beat the campaign on normal in about six hours, which is not that long. Or no, not even six hours, about five and a half hours, which is not that long, sadly. However, I didn't go around looking for terminals or um exploring really i just went straight through the campaign because i wanted to know what was happening and it's a it's a great campaign don't get me wrong they did not screw up the ending they didn't do pull a mass effect 3 assassin's creed 3 it 
I won't say it's a great ending, but it's definitely not a bad ending. It's just an ending that leads to Halo 5. So it is definitely worth not being mad about. If that makes, does that make sense? I just confused myself. But, but despite that it's um, short, somewhat short, and I was expecting a longer campaign, to be honest. And I saw one of the people making the game say that their campaign is going to be about 1.5 times longer than usual it's going to add a couple more hours worth I was like oh sweet longer campaign I actually didn't see that as I said earlier I pretty much rushed through the campaign and I played on normal How and they increased the difficulty for all levels like normal felt like a mix between heroic and normal while heroic will be like a middle between heroic and legendary and legendary is just going to be insane whoever can beat this game on legendary by themselves I will pin a medal on your chest. You did a great job. I, I couldn't do that. I might do it with like four friends, but other than that, I won't do it. I won't even attempt it. Don't want to frustrate myself. So it is a short campaign. I was a little disappointed in that. I thought it would be a lot longer. But if you do legendary, or yeah, if you go on legendary, that should add about three more hours, mainly trying to get past certain checkpoints, which will be just difficult, which did happen occasionally. But the checkpoint system in the game is very, it's very kind. It's not like, here's two checkpoints, whole mission, go. No, there was a lot of checkpoints. And Halo has always been very consistent about where they put their checkpoints. They're not just terrible spots. I don't have a checkpoint where I'm, like, spawning and getting shot at immediately. They did a pretty good job on that. And now for the Spartan Ops. The Spartan Ops is a episodic almost like a spec ops from like Call of Duty, but in a much larger and better form. Spartan Ops takes place six months after Halo 4. Now it doesn't, now during Spartan Ops, it doesn't, as far as I know, in episode one, it doesn't talk much at all about Halo 4. It doesn't, it just has it as a background. And you come back to Requiem on the UNSC Infinity as your Spartan 4, who you play in, as, in War Games and Spartan Ops. Now, the War Games is combat simulation for the Spartans. That's where they train to get ready for missions, which are the Spartan Ops. And they're, they go hand in hand. You get more XP, of course, playing the multiplayer, which is War Games. But you do get some XP from Spartan Ops. And there are challenges for campaign Spartan Ops and War Games. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Spartan Ops, I played all five chapters. There are, there will be, I believe, five episodes with five chapters each released weekly. Or there might be ten episodes, I'm not sure. But I played the five chapters in about an hour, hour and a half. Again, not that long. But considering that there's going to be at least definitely five episodes, which is five more chapters, and say each one's a hour and a half each, each episode, that's, doing math, uh, seven hours? I don't know. So wait, sorry. <laughs> That's like at least seven hours of extra gameplay. That's like a whole new campaign. Again, because again, short campaign. And here's another bug that I've noticed. I just because I was watching that gameplay there. There were kill cams for a long time in the game. Like I mean, not kill cams. Sorry. There were kill cams for the first few games I played, but after that, I never saw kill cams again. The final kill cam. I never saw that. Maybe the I I actually have no idea why not. Because the first couple of games I played, the night I got it, because I went to the midnight premiere, there were kill cams. But after that, there weren't. So I'm kind of confused about that. Maybe their servers were so flooded, it's glitching parts of the game. Because there are some connection issues right now during the day. At night, there weren't. But right as of now, when I'm making this, there are because there are so many people on it now. Now, in Spartan Arp, Spartan Arps, <laughs> Spartan Ops, it is, it feels just like campaign multiplayer it's all used on the same engine they didn't have two different engines making it that like or two different companies it was smooth and consistent very fun by the way the game mode that you're seeing right now is with dominion it is almost like a domination type game mode but if you capture a base it fortifies over time and resupplies so you can get extra weapons power weapons all that stuff which is really cool however it does go by really quickly like the game will be over very quickly it's I thought it'd be longer but anyway so Spartan Ops does have its own story you are a Spartan 4 who just got onto the UNSC Infinity you're a Crimson you're part of Squad Crimson 
but from what I saw in episode one, it's Squad Ma Fire Team Majestic. That's who's the characters you're seeing. <clears throat> and the animations for the characters look so good that I actually thought they were real life actors acting it out. But at least at a glance. Later you're like, oh no, that's definitely a game. But at a glance, it looks very realistic. Best graphics in the Halo uh, games by far. Now to war games. Oh, sorry. Let me finish up on Spartan Ops. Spartan Ops is really good. It is short, it, but it is fun. And with increased difficulty, we'll add much more time on each. And the challenges help contribute towards your multiplayer ranking. Now on to war games. War games is the successor to matchmaking, and it does it very well. It's all a combat simulation. At least, they're trying to tie in campaign, Spartan Ops, and multiplayer all into one. At least, so they're not like multiplayer, it's just multiplayer where red and team and a blue team fight each other. No, there's actually a reason. These are two teams that are fighting each other, but they're practicing to combat for real, or practicing combat for real war, which is Spartan Ops. Now, the war games, I do have some issues with some aspects of it, but overall, it is very good. I, I'll i start with the BR, since you see it right there. The BR, thank God it's back. I missed it. I love this gun. I love the new look, everything. However, it is not powerful enough to compete with the DMR. Now, the DMR, to, compared to other guns, is overpowered. However, I don't think they should lower the strength on it. I think they should up the strength on the BR, because it takes five shots, five three-round bursts, to kill someone. Uh, like if you're aiming for head and chest. And if all the bullets hit. Compared to Halo 3 and I think even Halo 2's four shot three bursts. So I was hoping, I hope that 343 makes the battle rifle the four shot again. Because it's, it's, not, it's not viable to use all the time. Because the DMR is just so much better. The DMR really is just amazing. It's, five shots and they're dead four or five shots and they're dead it is it's really good anyway the assault rifle is really good um it's actually not completely useless like halo 3 it's a mix between actually i think it might be pretty much just like reach but not that like design look it looks just like the halo 3 one but the power of halo reach does that make sense um the power weapons, I do like the idea of the ordnance drops, which drops either abilities or power weapons. That is cool, and I'm glad it's not in all game modes, because I do want to have like a traditional Halo feel, which you will get in Team Slayer, I believe. Team Pro Slayer. Team Slayer Pro. I haven't actually played that game mode, so I can't confirm that, but I assume so. Um, I'm actually a little disappointed that there aren't as many game modes as I thought there would be. There's about a dozen 10 game modes but i believe that they're going to change the game modes later they're going to add more game modes later they just want to get their default ones in get them test out get all like the server stress tested out stamped out all that stuff then they'll add new game modes and extensions of game modes so it might take a month or two we'll see the map design is not bad some people do not like it i know a friend of a friend of mine he really hated it. he does not like this game so far and it kind of bothers me he liked halo reach more than this game which really shocked me but i understood one of his points and a, another friend of mine's point is cookie is that the game isn't as competitive as halo 3 and that is true it has i won't say gone call of duty but it has become stream mainstream to be more competitive with its competitors like call of duty battlefield medal of honor all of that the ranking system is very similar to what you see in most games like Halo or <laughs> Call of Duty and Battlefield. It's very similar. It does have its own twist and but it's still very similar. It's not like Halo 3 and it's not like Halo Reach. Every time you rank up, you get one Spartan token or a Spartan point which you use to unlock um new new uh new abilities for your tactical or support package and new weapons which is good I mean it's a fine system it doesn't really bother me 
I can't wait till I get firepower, which is pretty much overkill from Call of Duty, so I can have a DMR and a BR, so that I can actually use the BR. The, like I said, the ranking system is very similar to mainstream games. It's not bad, but it does lack its competitive edge. It, you, there's no um, you have to win this game to rank up. There's no, there's none of that. Winning helps because you get an extra little score thing. You get more of that. You get a score bonus if you win, which is good. But it doesn't, your ranking up does not depend on you winning. And there are points per kill and all that that you've seen in this video. My, what me and some friends were thinking, mainly my friends, I don't really care. I like how it is right now. But that there should be the playlist that it is now, which is fine. But there should be a competitive one also, very similar to Halo 3. That still will give you like XP for winning and everything and kills, but that it's more competitive. Everyone starts off with, say, the BR or the assault rifle. Then you pick up guns. Make it very Halo 3 based with just the scoring look of Halo 4. Don't, don't make that the whole game. Just make that part of the game. The All the other guns are really, are really interesting. They're not terrible. They're not bad. They're, they're not great. Some of them are decent. Like the Magnum. Magnum's actually really good. It's like Halo Reach style. It's pretty powerful. Alright everyone. Now it's time for the final verdict. The final score for this game is a 9.5. And the reason why I was going to give it higher. But the reason why it's a 9.5 is it's a great game. However, due to the lack of a competitive side. The BR not being really up to par with the DMR. A few little glitches here and there is lowering the score. And also, the the multiplayer maps. There are 10 of them, which isn't really bad to start off with. However, if you play Infinity Slayer, you only actually play 4 maps. You, you have to go to other game modes. Now, I understand why they did that, but I was hoping for... Maybe they'll do like a title update to where it has all the maps like Valhalla, even though Infinity Ward... Or not Infinity Ward, wow. Infinity Slayer is 4v4. They could just section off Valhalla, uh, Ragnarok, sorry. It's called Ragnarok in this game. Mm -hmm. They could just section it off. Like, have only a third of the map. They could, for the big maps, they could shrink it down for certain game modes. That Those reasons right there have lowered the score. But they could be patched by an update. These could be all patched by a title update. The core game itself is amazing. So... Final score, 9.5 out of 10. This game is great. It's a must-buy if you're into Halo. If you're not into Halo, I do recommend a rent just to try it out. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have a good day.